sexual sorbet. <laughs> I love it. These exceptional small screen moments are both surgical and comedic in nature. That's the Nazi? I thought the Nazi would be a guy. I thought the Nazi would be a Nazi. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest Grey's Anatomy moments. Getting some exercise, Dr. Tori? <clears throat> yes, yes. <clears throat> Sir? For this list, we're focusing on the most hilariously unforgettable scenes of Shonda Rhimes' landmark ABC medical drama. Mama! Daddy! Oh my breasty! Number 10. Meredith on Morphine. What I Am. You're a good friend. So high right now. At hospitals, doctors fully expect to encounter drugged up patients, but it's always funny when said patient happens to be one of your own. We've got a fever, high white count, and tenderness over McBurney's point, which suggests oh, appendicitis. appendicitis. Early on in season three, Meredith Grey struggles to decide between Finn and Derek, while also struggling with a dose of morphine. Oh, can I just say how much it helps that I'm on drugs right now? Though her affliction is merely appendicitis, Meredith still goes on a ramble while under the influence. And so, the conversation takes on a faux dramatic tone, with the bedridden doc willfully spouting her opinions and facts that don't exactly please some of her colleagues. I am Meredith's appendectomy. I, uh, am I the only one who remembers the last time George scrubbed in on an appendectomy? He almost killed the guy. Sorry, George. Number 9. Drunk Dr. Bailey. Slow night so long. Hey, hey, that was fine. Now you have to order me another one. Oh god, that's disgusting. When you're without your child for the evening and ready to double fist a couple of drinks, conversations can easily take a turn for the worse. Or maybe even better, comparatively speaking. If Christina Yang can ten bar because she wants to, then I can drink because I want to. For example, Dr. Bailey livened up the party in season seven, enhancing each and every joke through her drunken presence. And while she's somewhat articulate, her first impressions of certain topics don't exactly align with the others. You know, I write online profiles and I check the boxes that say I like hiking and dogs. Is there a box I for fistulas? Because that's what I want. A guy that can talk fistulas. Incidentally, when Bailey arrives back at the hospital, she's not quite in work mode. Though if we were in her state, we wouldn't be up for doctoring either. We all need love. If the world had more love, we could get rid of wars and fistulas. Number 8. Drunk Docs Play Baseball. Put me in, coach. <laughs> When Owen organizes a softball game against Seattle Prez, Meredith comes prepared. Unfortunately for her teammates, she wields not a golden glove, but a sizable flask. My face is currently out of the office. Naturally, the alcohol doesn't ease the tension among the doctors, but instead enhances the drama. And while nobody becomes completely wasted, they get just ripped enough to provide a meta-commentary on both sporting and medical competition. But for a show like Grey's Anatomy, this is the perfect combination for hilarity and sharp one-liners, which allows the endearing personalities to become just a bit more forceful with their dialogue. I just want to say how proud I am of all of you. You are an incredible team. Now who's drunk? Number 7. Christina Tries to Talk Girl. Peace of my heart. What's the matter with you? I'm trying to talk girl. In any workplace, there's a certain code of conduct that must be respected. With that being said, not all women necessarily understand how to talk girl. Alex? Alex, you look thoughtful. I'm very interested to hear, I mean, uh, what are your thoughts? And over midway through season four, Christina Yang drops by a lunch conversation and tries her best to connect with the gang. But her forced attempts at girl talk don't appear genuine or even representative of how most people actually converse. She's married, okay? She has a husband. Well, does it hurt that she's married? I mean, does that hurt your, your heart? Even so, Christina does try to shed her steely demeanor, at least during this exchange, but everybody already knows the essence of her work persona. Well, you know what? I can't talk girl, and I shouldn't have to talk girl because I diagnose the patient. Number six, Bailey's real talk, The Becoming. So let us all close our knees and get back to our job so he can get back to his job and help the people that really need it. Just one episode after Christina Yang tries to understand girl talk, Dr. Bailey effectively communicates her thoughts to a group of annoyed nurses. Early on in the episode, Mark Sloan's sexual behavior becomes a topic of interest, ultimately leading the nurses to boycott his surgeries. Uh, hey, can you, uh, can you talk to the nurses? I need someone to uh, 
Stand up to them. But as Bailey so articulately conveys, all the women knew what they were getting into with McSteamy, and that his exploits should not have come as a surprise. Uh, this man is a whore, has always been a whore, will probably always be a whore. Floored by the real talk, Sloane processes the information, not necessarily offended or even annoyed, but impressed by the descriptive nature of Bailey's words. I'm a whore. I slept with her. The whole time I was thinking about Meredith. Who's the bigger whore? Number five, Christina gives Callie a trim. Something's gotta give. How's it going? Can I see? Fantastic, shut up. At work, Christina Yang is focused intently on the task at hand. But at home? Well, not so much. In season seven, Callie drops by to check on her friend, who supposedly quit and expresses a willingness for a radical change. Yet before she can finish her thought, Christina snips away a piece of Callie's long locks, which sets in motion an ill-advised haircut. I was gonna get my haircut today and like make a radical change. But, uh, then I thought, hmm, maybe you shouldn't do radical things right after a blonde woman is ripped your heart out of your chest and stomped on it. What do you- Oh my god! While Christina takes a practical approach to the process, the radical cut doesn't go over too well with Callie. Yet in the end, it all amounts for some needed girl time and plenty of laughter. Look at my hair! Yeah, I sort of can't believe you let me do that. Number four, George's syphilis injection. Who's zooming who? How we keep our secrets outside the hospital. Well, that's a little different. Early on in the debut season of Grey's Anatomy, George has a bit of a bathroom issue, which leads to a curious assumption by Izzy. And while this would have been embarrassing enough, the actual truth presents more of a problem, or in this case, a lasting joke, among George's co-workers. What am I gonna do about Olivia? Well, for starters, stop sleeping with her, unless you want that thing to fall off. Not only does he manage to get the SIF from Olivia, but he also seemingly has no other choice but to get an injection, administered and closely viewed by his pals. And so, this scenario reinforces the idea that not all doctors are comfortable around needles. Do you want to get rid of the SIF or not? Just shut up and drop them. Number three, Christina's lost eyebrows. Didn't we almost have it all? She really needs to cut somebody open. During the season three finale of Grey's Anatomy, Mama Burke slightly altered the appearance of her future daughter-in-law. As a result, Christina feels the need to work, and that she does. You have to let me cut, because I am standing here, eyebrowless, with no dignity left. But unfortunately, she accidentally scrubs off her wedding vows in the process, all due to the random loss of her own eyebrows. By the end of the affair, however, she finds some personal clarity, yet the act itself leaves her somewhat frazzled, even more so given the gravity of her impending wedding. But when you work at Seattle Grace, there's always someone there to help. There are no words in my head, okay? I have no vows. No vows. It's okay. It's going to be okay. You know what? Stop saying that. Will you say something else? Number two, Mark's penile fracture. Stairway to heaven. It's bent in, in the middle. I think, I think it broke it. Get Torres! Midway through season five, Mark Sloan and Lexi Gray engage in an activity of a sexual nature, yet the experience takes a turn for the worse. Mark's subsequent injury can be difficult to express in words, as evidenced by a concerned Lexi, and certainly due to the herding dog's painful reaction. That's not a good noise. That's a bad noise. That's a really bad noise. But luckily, he knows the right people, and one can easily find someone capable of fixing a fractured penis at Seattle Grace. We need to get in fast or you risk permanent damage. Oh God, no permanent damage, please. And so, this was a scenario in which a man wasn't figuratively broken by love, but rather by the literal act of making it. I'm sorry that I, I broke, I'm sorry that I hurt you, and I'm sorry that you're humiliated, but I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Mind if I ask how exactly this happened? I slept with Mark! Oh. And he had poor the note on him? No! I slept with Mark a year ago, and apparently this is what I get! Yeah. I may be 47 months pregnant. I may be on bed rest. I may not be able to see my own feet. But I am Dr. Bailey. I hear everything. I know everything. I'm watching each and every one of you. Christina, what the hell are you doing? Oh. Um, being comfortable in my apartment. I didn't see anything. I did, I did not see anything. Get out of here. Basics. Besides, 
Don't ask, you don't want to know. I do want to know. Really. You really want to know? It's a severed penis. Okay. Well, I didn't really want to know. I used to have sex injuries with Mark. Mark was really awesome at leaving you with good sex injuries. And... <laughs> Please don't cry on my ass. Sorry? Please don't cry. Uh, One, two... I miss? Number one, panty board. I am a tree. You can tell me whose damn panties are on the bulletin board. Early on in season three, a curious case of panties mystifies the employees of Seattle Grace. Due to a fling with Derek, Meredith's undergarments becomes pinned to a bulletin board via Addison. Needless to say, Dr. Bailey doesn't find the panty shenanigans funny at all. This is a hospital, people. Serious work happens here. We save lives here. <coughs> oh, something funny? <laughs> Whose are these? Once Callie seemingly puts an end to the situation, she only confuses poor George, thus amplifying the legend of the panty board. All in all, those damn drawers led to some serious emotions for those involved, all within an episode featuring a human tree. I would guess some pretty massive internal injuries. You would guess? Do you agree with our list? If you want crappy things to stop happening to you, then stop accepting crap and demand something more. What do you think is the most hilarious Grey's Anatomy moment? I didn't hesitate. I was thinking. You have to think about it. For more comedic top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Stop sleeping with your coworkers that ruins them. Slept with you. And now I no longer sleep with men.